I'm just going to continue painting the details on this painting. And I know you've seen a lot of that already. But let me just make a few more points here while I'm painting. And then we can move on to the next section. One thing to keep in mind while you're painting is to add the detail where you want your eye to focus. So obviously here in the face is where we really want the viewer to look. So that's where I'm going to spend the most time with the detail. And I'm just going to continue to use the same techniques that I've been using. Square bracket right to up the size of my brush. Square bracket left to go down. And the other thing that I'm going to do, the other technique to draw your eye to the place I want, is by just leaving the painting loose in a lot of places. Basically, as you fan out from the face, it's going to become looser and loose, looser. So, tightest amount of detail in here, so that it's sharp and crisp and you focus on it. And then as you move out away from the face, there will be less detail. The paint will be less opaque. And that will help to draw the eye towards the little girl's face. And I'm going to I'm going to put in some of these these blues here which are real dark and they stand out a lot and I don't want to focus on them too much, but what I will do is use them to kind of frame in that face a little bit too. But we can leave that part loose. Let's get some of these solid blocks of color in here. So I'm just going to keep doing this, what I've been doing. And just think about composition. Think about framing the little girl's face in so that you really can focus on it. You're looking at the painting. So now you can see already it's really the focus of the painting. I am going to add some more color here, but just leave it looser. And you'll see as I jump to the a more finished painting that that's what I will do. Uh, that's coming together pretty nicely though. The only other thing I'll mention is I have this square dry brush here and this is kind of a cheater brush because watercolor really is about building layers of transparent paint on top of each other but if you get a ton of paint and not a lot of water you can make some pretty opaque paint so this one's kind of cheating in the sense that you can paint right over the top of something and change the color of it and it's not really multiplying on top of the one below it it's just changing that color. So if you have parts where you want to go in and so that's the different that's what that looks like. If I were to do it with the multiply one of these other brushes. Actually that one's not multiply. This one. You can see that brush is set to multiply. So it's actually multiplying this color times the one below it, which is different than just straight changing the color. So that's not going to get darker. That's going to get closer and closer to this color here. If I'm using the multiply brush, which is more correct probably in terms of watercolor, it's not getting closer to that color. It's just darkening, multiplying on top of itself over and over. That's actually kind of cool right there, except a little too dark. But anyway, those are the, the last couple points I want to make before we move on. Remember your smudge, smudge tool to make these colors bleed together nicely. And now I'm just going to jump to a more finished painting with some of these details done already. And then we can talk about putting finished, finishing touches on your painting.